Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again with another video. Today, we're just going to briefly talk about a bit of high-speed steel and mainly focus on the carbide bits. There's so many different carbide bits that are out there. So, I am by no means a machinist. I don't have years of experience. But what I do have is uh, experience using the carbide bits over the last five or six years and what's worked for me. So if you're a beginner, you may want to pay a little bit of attention and uh, hopefully the information that I present uh, is helpful. Now, typically I still use a lot of high-speed steel. So that's a bit of high-speed steel ground, huge radius on it, so you get a better finish. And you'll notice that it's got positive rake meaning that the tip faces upwards and you've got huge clearance here. When we have the actual working tip facing dead flat, that's a neutral position. And when we have the working tip facing down, that's negative rake. So you can get good results with positive rake, neutral rake and negative rake. Generally speaking, positive rake gives a little bit better finish a lot of the uh, carbide bits and the shanks being sold are neutral. Uh, the ones that I've switched over to lately are the negative rake. And they're 16 millimeter bits, and I'll explain the reason why. So we'll go to the first one. And they're 16 millimeters, and they're triangle. All right? So the designation is TNMG. So that's the bit there. TNMG and the 16 uh, well look these are 16 millimeters now the reason when you actually look at the bit you'll notice that the front there's no relief and that's why it's tilted down on an angle about five six degrees so you've got three sides there but when you flip it over we'll just get one out of the box you've got three working corners on one side And you flip it over and you've got three working corners. So you've got six working corners. Now these come in a huge variety of different styles, different uh, chip breakers and different radiuses. So I don't want to go into all of that, but there is a huge amount of different styles in those. And as you'll notice, it faces down on an angle so that you've got clearance of the carbide bit. And you've got a grub screw here and a grub screw here. So they're really secured well. I had to grind this down. You can see it's 16 millimeter by 16 millimeter. I had to take about three and a half mil off that. As you can see there, I milled it on the lathe using a four jaw chuck. So this is what I'm using now because I'm getting these quite cheap. And the other thing is, and we'll talk about that, if you look at the typical diamond shape, you only get two uses out of it, and you've got to throw it away. So I'm getting six uses out of the uh, uh, triangle. Now, the other one is a trigon. This is different again. It's triangular, but it's got six sides on it. So we get different working angles here. You can get this in all different type of chip breakers, and it's the same thing. It's negative rake, and again, it was 16 millimeter, and I had to mill that down. And same thing. You've got a grub screw here and you've got a grub screw here. The best part about this one, this takes the same grub screw or Allen key, I should say. Whereas this is a little bit smaller there and a little bit bigger here. So this one's a little bit different. So they are fantastic for general use. This one here is probably used in industry more than anything else. They're not a finishing carbide bit. They are for bulk removal of material, but they still leave a reasonable finish. So it's something to consider uh, about using these, but you'll save a lot of money because you're going to get six sides to it. And that's probably the main reason I swapped over to those because of the six different sides. Now, the ones that are, are going to uh, cost you more money because you're going to get three times less usage is the diamond shape there. And the designation of that you'll see on the back 
DCMT 11T304. So there's the code for it, and there's some other information. Now, they're actually not too bad. Again, they'll come in different uh, formats where the chip break is different, the radius on the end is different. You can get into tighter spots with those. That's one of the best advantages of them. Uh, they'll get into tighter spots. But you're only going to get two uses out of that. So that's why I've sort of gone away from those. And it's the same as these type here. They're like a, an offset square between a square and a diamond. The same thing, you only get to use two sides. So that's that one as well. We've got the smaller version of that. That's a smaller version there. And that's typically used on, on the boring bar. I've got four sets of boring bars, 6mm, 7mm, 8mm and 10mm. Small boring bars to get in real tight places. And that's the type of carbide bit that we use. Now, typically, when I first started using carbide bits, I brought this particular piece here. Now, as you can see, it's got an angle there, right? And you can only use it once. So you get to use it three times. Now, the other thing that I dislike about these is they're okay if you're doing general turning. But if you've got a piece of weld on a bit of metal and you've got to turn it down, I've chipped these so many times they really can't handle uh, a lot of punishment like the trigon or the triangular type one because if you look at the difference we'll put the two up together look at the difference in thickness this is twice as thick so this can handle a lot more punishment so i've sort of gone away from using these uh yeah they'll get into a little bit tighter spot but again the diamond type shape does and this is a different brand one here. The coatings are different. This has a gold type coating. And I think this is tungsten carbide. Uh, yeah, yeah, look at different coatings on them. All different. Okay, the next one that we've got, uh, and it leaves a beautiful finish, are the button type ones, the little round circular ones. These comes in all different sizes. And because of the large radius, you can actually get a good surface finish. And you can put a nice radius on a piece of metal. So they're really good for that. And you can use them multiple times because as they get blunt, you can turn them around a little bit. So you've got 360 degrees. So you've got quite a lot of uh, corners that you can use on that. Again, they do come in uh, the relief angle. You can get different relief angles on them. Uh, and different type of shapes for the chip breaker okay moving on one of the other ones uh, in carbide are these type here that we put on our uh, when we're making threads I've got them only in this size there is a smaller size which is something probably more like that size so that's your, your threaded type ones another one that I brought recently that works really great are these carbide bits for parting off they're only very small they're very cheap you get to use two two sides to them there they are there you don't get a lot of depth one of the other things is it's only about two millimeters wide the bit and you're removing you know you're removing a bit of metal two millimeters wide metal so and they come in slightly different profiles with the chip breaker and that so they really rip into the metal Now, what have we got left? I think that's pretty much it that I've gone through the lot. Now, there are, there's another new one on the market. Can't get a lot of information on it. I think it's real, but with all the fake stuff going around on the internet, sometimes things are published and they're not accurate. Someone may be able to uh, let me know if these are out in production or they're going to be. I'll just pop a slide up. Got a bit of a weird shape, this. So anyway, time will tell. Uh, and I'm not too sure 100% uh, whether you can flip it over and it's the same on the other side. So, yeah, look, if you're going to go to carbide bits, definitely the Trigon. I reckon this is the one to go for. This is the one that they use a lot in industry. And you've got massive support underneath here. You've got this piece right underneath here. You've got a little bit of clearance, not much there. There's just a little tiny bit of clearance, but... 
If you put a straight edge or something straight up against it, you'll see the clearance that you've got, see? So that's the clearance, the downward angle, negative rake. As I said, your finish isn't as good as a positive rake or a neutral rake, but it's pretty darn close. And depends what you want it for, especially if you're going to use it for roughing up, you know, you're going to uh, strip off bulk metal. I have seen some brilliant finishes using those, and it all depends on what sort of tool steel that you're going to use and speeds and feeds. So it's one of those things that you need to experiment with. But for the price of carbide bits and the durability, this type of carbide bit is going to outlast this type of carbide bit probably tenfold. It's so much stronger. If you only do an aluminium and a little bit of mild steel and you're just doing general turning down, this will be okay. Yeah, this is only for a 12 millim. This is a 12 millimeter shank. This is only for a small lathe. You can even get some of the small lathes that are uh, 10 millimeter shanks. But the thing is, when we go to the 16 millimeter or the 20 millimeter, there's a, there's another size up there. This ain't the biggest size by no means. But as you go to the much much larger, uh, more commercial type ones, you can find that you get them for a cheaper price. And that's why I brought them because. These, to me, were much more superior than this little tiny ones that are here. I've chipped that many of these. It's not funny. And I didn't believe that, that it was a really heavy load. Uh, and I've got a few here that are already... These are all chipped. You can see on the back there how they get chipped. And once they're chipped like that, they just don't work. Can't flip them over, can't reuse them. And that's why the Trigun or this type here, you've got six cutting tips on it. Anyway, I hope that information is it's technically aimed at the beginner. Uh, the professional machinist out there would have a much better idea than what I have. I'm only a home user. And I'm only passing this information on because if you're thinking of purchasing some carbide bits, do a little bit of research on this one here. And they've all got different designations when you look at them. Uh, every carbide bit ha has a code and a number. Uh, the Trigon is TNMG, right? So that's the designated uh, code for that. And when you look at... Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll re-state re, uh, that again. This is WNMG. So it's a W. Whereas this one here is T. T for triangle. Uh yeah, so where you see the W, that'll be for Trigon. So, look, there's codes out there. You can get a chart that uh, the list goes on and on. So if you look at something like this, this will be TCMT. And they're just your typical triangular type ones. So there's a lot of codes, and trying to remember them all sometimes is uh, a lot harder than uh, what you may think because... When you look at something like this, you've got totally different codes for these as well. Uh, nah, it's about the only thing that you've got on there. So yeah, look, it's, look the other thing is, a lot of these, if you go to your local uh, shop, some of the shops here in Australia, you're going to pay big dollars for some of these, especially if you buy a packet like these. You could pay in excess of well over $100 for 10. Millions and millions of these of really high quality being produced in China. So don't sort of get disillusioned by buying them from China. I'm buying these for just over a dollar a piece. And I have had no problems with them. These ones here that have a brand name... 
These are about eight dollars each. So that's eighty dollars for a pack of ten. So yeah, it's much cheaper to get them from China. And and as I said, I can't pick the difference. Uh, they're excellent quality. Anyway, I hope this information helps. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.